As we head into Easter weekend, a new Gallup poll shows the number of people who belong to a church has hit an all-time low. And tonight in an, an exclusive interview, News 13's Kimberly King talks with Reverend Franklin Graham on why he feels the decline may be tied to COVID. It's changed. There is a shift. Franklin Graham is aware the Gallup poll shows fewer than 50% of Americans are now church members across the U.S. What would you say about televangelism? I mean, you have names out there like Joel Osteen who have huge followings. Um, do you think that the shift in the communication medium has left the brick and mortar churches? First of all, with this pandemic, churches were closed. Walmart stayed open, uh, liquor stores stayed open. And so pastors started teaching online. And it's interesting that the numbers of people watching online were higher than what they had in their, in their pews and the giving financially went up. Graham, CEO of Samaritan's Purse, recently tweeted support for vaccines, getting some backlash from followers. There are always people, Kimberly, that, that are going to be the naysayers. But Graham says Jesus would have supported shots. Is there a divide between faith, having faith that God will <coughs> heal you or, or protect you from COVID and science? Well, uh, Kimberly, in this country for the last 200 years, uh, we have seen churches bringing modern medicine to their communities. Graham adding this. I believe in science. At 68 years old, he's chosen to be vaccinated but remains a critic of early quarantines. And this is the first time in history that uh, we have locked down healthy populations. The, the medical experts wanted the nation to quarantine so that there was not interaction with people that were asymptomatic. One source very high up in the previous administration, it was not attempt to to stop COVID, it was to, to slow it down. There's no disputing the charity Samaritan's Purse has been on the front lines of emergency response, including recent Alabama storms. His Easter message is this. And we're still dealing with COVID-19, but that doesn't mean that God has forgotten us. And I would encourage people to put their faith and trust in him. Good morning, I'm Katie Killen. This week, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper signed an executive order to extend protections against evictions. The governor's order is in line with the current CDC moratorium. It runs through June 30th. The moratorium has been around since September. New legislation could help North Carolina firefighters battling cancer and their families. Senate Bill 472 would create a trust fund and pay firefighters diagnosed with occupational cancers $25,000 up front for medical expenses under certain conditions. The first of several hearings was held yesterday in Henderson County in a case that could lead to the removal of District Attorney Greg Newman. A petition against Newman was filed by families of crime victims. It's still unclear if Newman will lose his job. There was no major decision or action taken yesterday. Another hearing in the current matter will be held later this month. Now here's Ryan Coulter with your Skywatch forecast. And we are looking at another cold, windy day ahead of us today. Temperatures about 20 degrees cooler than we should be for this time of the year. We're still bringing in that cold Canadian air. We're on the cold side of this area of high pressure. Overall, good news for the remainder of the weekend. It does look like after today we're going to start to warm up. But again, we got to get through today first. Plenty of sunshine at least. Temperatures only in the 40s today. 60s by tomorrow. Easter Sunday looking like a good one for us. A high closer to 70 degrees by the afternoon. Today, we're only in the mid 40s for the mountains, low 50s for the upstate. Taking a look at our forecast here for the next seven days. Again, warmer for the weekend, but even warmer by next week. Highs in the 70s by Monday into Tuesday. We're staying dry for the first part of the week. It does look like our next chance of rain arrives late in the week with a chance of thunderstorms even on Thursday. All right, and sometimes in life, you always know what you were meant to do, but it just doesn't happen right away. And this week's thanks to teachers, News 13's Karen Wynn introduces us to one teacher who was living on the other side of the country when he realized where he needed to be. Is the Teddy starting with adding the whole numbers? All right. Robbie Harms is a fifth grade math and science teacher in Coons Intermediate School's dual language program. This year, he's made a big impression on Natalia Luke after seeing her son, Matias, thrive in his class. He's not gonna leave a kid fall behind and I'm very happy to have him as my son's teacher this year. Matias is usually a virtual student, but was in class today, grateful for the teacher who has made fifth grade fun. Whenever we do a test, he always does like some little game before it, like he finds little games that you can do that are like maybe fun or interesting. If I had 15 Oreos every single day, how many Oreos would I have eaten across those four days? 
Harms tries to add fun to adding fractions today by having the kids use models, number lines, and interesting visualizations. Well, the answer is too many. <laughs> too many. We uh, put a big emphasis on like uh, visualizing the problem, so solving it with like a model rather than just <laughs> the way I learned like in fifth grade was just uh, kind of like rote memorization. Harm says teaching is in his blood. His parents are both lifelong educators. However, after college in Chapel Hill, he started a career in the sports world. Um, I got a job as a sports reporter after college um, and then realized it wasn't really for me. Um, and then uh, I started kind of working at a school. I was in San Diego at the time. I started working at a school there and, and realized that's what I wanted to do. Um, and I think I, I think I kind of always knew I wanted to do it. Now Harms is enjoying the career he's made for in a school he loves. Coots is an incredible place to work. Um, they've, they've been here uh, throughout the year for, for all of the different challenges we've faced. And um, I'm just really lucky to, to have a, a teaching job here. In Buncombe County, I'm Karen Wynn, News 13. Spring has sprung at the Biltmore Estate once again this year. More than 100,000 bulbs are in the ground for the Biltmore Blooms event. Along with the flowers outside, there's also a new feature called Biltmore Blooms that combines floral displays with some of the amazing art pieces inside the main house. The annual Easter egg hunt has some changes because of the pandemic. This year, it's a scavenger hunt with supersized eggs hidden inside the Biltmore house and around the estate. That runs through Easter Sunday for kids nine and younger. And remember what I said. What did you say? Go for those closet eggs in the library. Okay, that's yeah, the sure like climb that. up, climb uh -huh. up the ladder in there. This sure. sounds like a really good idea. Yeah. yeah.